This is a series of films that tells the history of contemporary fashion photography as seen through the eyes of models. Tell me a little bit about the boat. That was the first time I worked um, for Prada with Glenn. Yeah. <clears throat> and they put me under contract. And um, we were in some tiny country town in Italy. Right. And it was cold and I remember, I mean, I barely, I didn't even know Glenn. And, yeah. you know, he wasn't really a known photographer. No, it was just really early yeah. days for Glenn. Yeah. His first and major campaign. You know, I just kind of rolled with whatever they, were, they cool. asked me to do. And I remember they uh, had me go out to this tiny little pond and they lit these fires. And, um, and I remember thinking, you know, I thought it was going to be pretty cool, but I really didn't realize that this particular campaign would change his career and change. Yeah. It kind of was a moment, big moment in fashion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, certainly a big moment for Prada, and um, really grateful to be a, a part of it. And, and just because it's on the same campaign, yeah? No, this is the next season. Next season, okay. And he's working, I remember him talking about it, he's working with a, a lighting cameraman from the film world. Yes, he, we were working with um, Chino Cinque, uh, Ch is that how you say it? The, I don't the know, time. Right. It's where Fellini shot all his films. Right, the, okay. And the production. Right. Um, and outside of Rome, and so yeah. he had hired some of those people, yeah. the studio from Chino Cinque. And this was, you know, a little bit reminiscent of The Shining. Yes, yeah. And this actually is a little bit reminiscent of, I think, Apocalypse Now. Or Time oh, of the Gypsies. Oh, okay, right. Those two films. Because then he's got, um, you've got the end of Blade Runner. Exactly. So there were some film references throughout yeah. all of these. Yeah. And um, the fake snow and, and yeah. the lighting and, and, I mean, Glenn lighting is everything. Yeah. So we would only shoot about two shots a day. Oh, really? Because it would take that long to set <laughs> the lighting. <laughs> So how long was it? It was like a week shooting each one. Excellent. Uh -huh. This I, I think that. might have been the, the very first one. I think might have been the fastest one, and it was like you know right. two days or three days. But really? um, I think once the the enormity of what he was doing and the pressure and, and yeah. um, back then there were no computers and we had to run the images back from Rome to Milan. They had to be driven. Really. <coughs> Polaroids had to be Pe driven. Pete, would you want some more water, Emma? That'd be great. Um, so, yeah. Because they had to show. They had to show Mutra Mutra Prada. the Polaroid, so she'd say, "Yeah." <coughs> exactly. That's such a hard way to work. It I've always heard that about Prada that they work in that way. They check the Polaroid. Yeah, it was pretty um, intense, but um, but we got it done. I mean, meanwhile we were we were there for a week, but yeah. we had a good time. I'm sure. We found lots of. We wrote songs. We. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Music was a big part of that stuff. He really? played a lot of music. What sort of music? I think we played some weird, creepy music during this stuff. So atmosphere setting music. Mm -hmm. Atmosphere right. setting music. And right. then sometimes we get really tired and um, have to put on some like David Bowie. Yeah. Um, but especially the, the snowy shots, those I think were more atmospheric. And again, how much is Glenn directing you and how much are you <coughs> offering imagery to Glenn? I... Glenn is not super directive, but he's also, you know, he will tell you what he likes and, and yeah. um, but I don't know, maybe, I, I feel like I'm given quite a lot of trust by people because yeah. I think I'm, I can intuit what's, what the story is. I mean, they'll, they'll give you a description, but I mean, I don't remember give, being, you know, being given like a big description for that yeah. uh, first image that you showed with the boat. Um, because you can imagine these images done by other photographers we talked about would be much more directed and much more stylized. Yes. I guess that's part of what Glenn brings to it, isn't, you know, is the fact that actually it feels more human in that way. Yes. Where you haven't pushed the leg to make it longer, you haven't, you know, all those sorts of things which perhaps Richard yeah. Avedon or something might have asked you to do. Yes. Um, but I still think that there's something, even when a photographer is directing you, um, or even a great director is directing you in a film, I think that part of why they hire you is to is that they expect you to bring something too. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. that's that fifty percent that I have to come to, yeah. which is I have to interpret. Um, yeah. 
some of what, what's going on, whether you say it or not, I have to be able to interpret it. Yeah, and you, you, um, you, know, you and other models bring so much to a, a shoot, you know, which of course is why you know, we all love photographing you, because you bring things that we can never imagine. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all fine being very directive, and you know, I'm quite directive in how I work as well. But in the end, you want to be surprised by something. Mm -hmm. You're not just working with a doll who you're kind of bending into mm -hmm. shape. You're trying to hope that that person will, will express something or even go completely against what you're asking them mm -hmm. to do so you can see things you can't see or mm -hmm. couldn't imagine. Mm -hmm. So you know, working with somebody like yourself is obviously, that's the pleasure in it. You, you do bring so much mm -hmm. to a shoot. Um, but just going back to, to Glenn for a second. So was he a, um, a confident photographer, an anxious photographer? What, describe a little bit. I mean, I know he's a friend, so I, um. I do know Glenn a little bit. But. No, Glenn is a confident photographer. I, I think he, after the first um, campaign came out for Prada, I think that there was a bit of a pressure on him and tremendous right. weight to, to achieve great heights again. Yeah. And so we worked really hard on the second one. Right. Um, and I couldn't answer for him. He always seemed like he was having a good experience. Yeah. yeah. But he did, they did take a long time to light each image and right. get it right. Right. And, um, you know, again, that could have been due to the fact that the first one was such a success for him that yeah. he needed to make sure that the, the second one yeah. had its own presence. Um, but in general, he, no, he's not an insecure photographer. He, no. I think he loves what he's doing and he has confidence in what he's doing. Yeah. And do you find that some photographers do involve you in their own personal artistic drama, if you want? Do you find sometimes you suffer with them? Because some photographers are trying to articulate their own inner turmoil, should we say. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely been moments where you've, you know, I've had like, um, people feel really stuck and yeah. they can't seem to find it. Yeah. And they torture, you know, the hair or the makeup yeah. or they just, you know, they themselves, they like, scrap everything and you start all over again. Yeah. But in general, I mean, as long as they're not like a hack, <laughs> photographer yeah. um, I'm okay with letting people work out their process yeah. within a, a reasonable amount of time yeah um, it's frustrating when you're working with someone who really isn't that spectacular yeah. that then you start losing your patience and do you know when a great photograph is being taken do you think do you feel you're aware of that or are you aware of it because of the whole process for instance with Glenn here you must have been able to tell it is, you know, it's something different and it's a different attitude, mm -hmm. so perhaps you can tell, but do you feel that when the photographer gets really excited about the image, you, you sense that as well? Is it a 50-50 on that more metaphysical level? Um, you know, again, like, I, I don't think it, when I was younger I had as much of a, an awareness. Um, I think, th actually, the s second campaign I started yeah. realizing yeah. the importance of what we were doing and... Um, but I do think you feel those moments where you, you, yeah. you hit it, you, you're yeah. like, oh, we got this. Yeah. Um, especially with, when you know you're working with someone great, yeah. you can feel it and they say, oh, that, you know, that third image was the one and you're like, yeah. you know, I, I felt that yeah. too. Um, harder when you're working with people that are not maybe up to the caliber of, of someone mm. great like you or, or Glenn or Peter, you don't, you, their excitement is because you might have perhaps brought them up to a new level that's not, I mean, they're just not, yeah. they're not necessarily great images of you, but for them it's a, it's a great, yeah, yeah. great thing. So very quickly, last question, how much do you work with new photographers and new unknown photographers? I work with the new people a lot. This year I've worked with almost all new photographers. Really? Mm -hmm. Exciting. It's so fun. Yeah. It's really fun to work with new people and, um, you know, kind of experience, uh, a whole new generation. I mean, I think everybody I've worked with this last year has been like under 35. Right. And so that's been really fun to yeah. meet these kind of new visionaries and, and see where they're going to go and their perspective. Yeah.